and welcome back to my channel and back to another vlog. Um, this one's a little bit different just because it's not about riding. I'm, um, I'm actually stuck at home with a rather poorly puppy and so I was trying to get myself organised and make use of my time and well I have the ROR, the Race Horse to Riding Horse National Championships coming up in a few weeks and I'm just trying to get myself really organised and prepared. So, having gone to the regionals so far already, the first thing that really stuck out when I um, first went into like, the warm up and saw the other horses that I was going to be competing against was just how well they were turned out. And as you will have seen the title of this video, I thought we'd do a little bit of how to be a dressage diva. Now I'm not proclaiming that I'm a dressage diva, I am far from it. I am, um, yeah, I was merely just trying to keep up with the other guys when I went to the regionals. So I thought this time I can be more prepared, get myself ready, and hopefully I will look more like I'm meant to be there. And what I mean by that is I want to look the part. So I was looking at the other horses, the other riders when I was competing at the regionals, and they were just so beautifully turned out. I mean, you would look at them and know that they were dressage riders. I mean, everything was just polished and perfection and, well, a fancy bit of that for myself. So here we are. Um, I'm starting off, as you'll see, with my tack here. Um, and as we all know, the first thing we do before we go for competition is we clean our tack. So I thought while I was doing this video, again, making use of my time, I would do a little bit of tap cleaning whilst also going through some of the bits and bobs I'm going to have a go at doing to try myself, make myself look more dressage divery. So let's get cracking. So I always start off with this um, NAF tack cleaner, just because I feel like it really just like takes all the muck and the dirt away from the saddle nice and quick and easily, and then I can condition the saddle and the leather afterwards, and hopefully it can look all new and shiny again. So let's crack on. All the frit. I just like breathed it all in. <coughs> Don't do that. <coughs> wow. So I feel like apart from your tap, the next thing that I always notice or what I judge other competitors on is how good their plaits are looking. I don't know if you do the same, but I feel like if your plaits are like properly on point. I feel like you're looking a bit more professional and you look more like you know what you're doing. And just good plaits always intimidate me. So I feel like if I improve my plait game, you know, moving away from those massive great big golf balls, or like one small plait, one big plait, one's falling out, one's really tight. You know, if I can get them so they're all identical and looking neat and tidy, I feel like, again, that will just make me feel better and a bit more confident and a bit more like I should be there, aiming for those dress out of diva vibes. So I thought what we do now is we just switch over to the yard and I can quickly show you some of the things that I have been working on to try and improve my plaiting game and maybe that will help you too because yeah Harry's plaits were not great last time I mean I'll put a little a little thingy maybe here so they weren't bad plaits but you definitely improve on them you definitely make them better so oh, let's go do that so I've gone for a slightly different plan of attack and I have plaited Harry up with the kind of spacing that I'd like. I've got 11 plaits and I've plaited them the length that I want, so a finger length long, which means that I can roll them up and they should look like this, which is kind of the look I'm going for. I want it to look thick, healthy mane, but not like a golf ball. So. The next idea is now I've got the spacing and the length that I want, I'm probably going to go ahead and just hack off all of that excess length that I don't need. I'm then also thinking 
that I will just go through the plaits and the ones that are looking too thick, I will pull that section of the mane. So here we go, I've popped a few plaits in and as you can see I have hacked off all of the ends. <laughs> They're nice and blunt. And now I'm going to undo the plaits one by one and we'll tidy up the ends to take up any long bits that the hacking off has left behind. So I'm just snip snip snipping like I've seen in the videos. And this is supposed to be done at a 45 degree angle. So there we go, I've kneaded it up. And now I'm using a rake, fairly badly, to try and take some of the thickness out of this section. So the bits that I've already plaited up, I thought that they were thin enough to create nice plaits and I'm happy with them. And now I'm just thinning them out. So I've thinned it and now I've plaited it. And that's the difference you can see the end is no longer blunt it's a better thickness of a plait and it'll roll up and look more like the others so there we go i have rolled it up and banded it and now it matches the other plaits and i just continued like this down the rest of the mane and as you can see i actually think it's worked pretty well the plaits now all match each other there's no really big ones or really small ones i think it looks quite neat and it was much more manageable to plait once i'd sort the length and the thickness out and I mostly just took the thickness out of the ends of the mane um, so I didn't get loads of short spiky bits throughout. And I'm actually really pleased with it. I feel that looks loads better. I think it was really neat and it was actually quite quick to do. So now that we've dealt with mane, I thought that we could also have a look at tails. And now I'm never sure with tails whether to go for the pulled look or whether we should go for the plaited look. And now Harry has a really good tail, especially for a thoroughbred, in the sense that he actually has a tail. A lot of thoroughbreds have quite wispy tails or not a lot of tail and yeah, we do have it on our side. A bit like the mane, there's a little bit too much of it. And so I often look at Harry's tail and I'm never sure if to just pull it and try and make it look neater that way. I'm not the best at pulling and when it grows out, I just feel like it's a losing battle. So today I have decided I'm going to stick with plaits just because we've got a lot of tail at the top which means I hopefully can do a really nice tight plait and we'll look neater. And I don't know about you but I always feel like the more effort I put in I feel, I feel like better about it. So if I just pulled it it was already done I'd feel a bit like, I don't know, I feel like I maybe wasn't putting enough effort in. So I'm going to go for plaits so we're going to switch over now and we're going to go and see a bit of my plaiting and see how I can work on it and what we're going to do to try and make it look better. So I like to use Shoshin for grooming Harry's tail and because I'm plaiting I'm just going to be adding that to the lengths just because I don't want the top of his tail where I'm going to be plaiting to be really slippery. I kind of need it a little bit dirtier to try and help hold the plait together and make the hairs kind of stick in place. And as you can see here, Harry has lots of length on top, which is why plaiting is a lot easier with him. And then this is if I get scared of, I'm never sure how much to take off. Like, some dress badge horses have a really long, floaty tail, don't they? But Harry's literally is nearly touching the floor, so I'm going to take a bit off. Right, um, so the fat ones? I don't know. Um, So now the tail is brushed out and I've trimmed some of the length off it, it's time to plait. So I like to start off by just brushing out the top of the tail just to help loosen up those strands to make it easy when I'm plaiting. Sometimes you end up fighting with bits of knotted up tail and it just, yeah, it just takes so much more time and can ruin your plait because you need to keep it nice and tight. So you start off by taking your three sections. I take two from the right and one from the left just because that's how I've always done it. And then I just slowly start plaiting down and each time I pass a bit over into the middle, I take another little section from the side and add that in. And that's basically how you do a French plait, which I'm sure you've all done before. As I said, the main trick is just to keep the plait as tight as possible. And I also find 
that the smaller the sections that you add in, the better it looks. If you add really big chunky sections in, it can kind of make the plait look a bit bulky. So I take really small sections and I just keep adding them in all the way down and I tend to do it down to about three quarters of the length of the dock. Some people do it all the way down to the end, but let's be honest, that just takes ages and who knows if you don't go all the way to the end. So I've skipped a bit, I've done about three quarters and then once I get to that point, I then just do a simple plait down the rest of the length of the tail, which is what I'm doing here. And then I quickly band it off and we're done. And there we go, we're done. And I was really pleased with this. I think it actually looks really neat and I would be happy to go out and do a dressage test with it. So, we have plaits, which I just feel so much better about because I've been meaning to work on a plait for such a long time. And it's one of those skills that you can just always improve on. And if your plaits are on point, it does just elevate the entire picture. So, one step closer to dressage and divadum. The next thing that we need to work on, I mean, not even work on, I just need to start on it somewhere, I just have a go because I've never done this before. But a lot of the other competitors that I was out with at regional who were looking, you know, the ones that kind of intimidate them, they all had quarter marks. You know those like funny stripy bits on the horse's bums? I've never done it, I've never had a go at it. I always admire it, it just looks complicated. <laughs> so, what did I do? I sat at home in bed and I've been watching some videos on how to do it. And there's a few different techniques and different patterns. And then if you want to get really complicated, this whole like, if your horse's bum's this shape, you should do these kind of marks. And if you want to draw attention to this part of the horse's bum or muscle, then you should do this kind of pattern. And I'm not quite there yet. I'm just gonna go. So I've got two options. I've got stencils, which I'll show you once we flip over to the yard. Um, but I've got like the little plastic squares, you know, with the um, <laughs> like the shapes on. So we're gonna have a go at them, and I think that that's gonna be the backup plan. We might just have to like put some stars or hearts on these bum or whatever whatever stencil it is that I've got. Um, so we're gonna have a go at that. And then the other option is where you get your brush and you like brush the hair in the wrong direction to make it stand out. So yeah, we're going to have a go at that. I've never done it before. This could be really embarrassing and this may be the hurdle that I fall down at. But I feel like it is important because like I said, all the really impressive looking riders with like the super fancy looking horses all had these quarter marks. So let's just go and have a go. Off to the yard we go. So this is the first quarter mark that we're going to go with. So I just quickly prep the horse's hair with some spray and it's basically just firm hold hairspray that I'm using. This first one is a stencil, like little diamonds and literally I'm just laying on the horse's butt and just brushing the coat in the wrong direction. It's literally as simple as that. And there we go, it's as simple as that. But I did think it looked a bit awkward and like it was maybe in the wrong place. So I decided to go ahead and add a bit more. And using the stencil, I thought it would be really easy. But it's actually kind of awkward trying to hold it still with one hand and then brush with the other. So it's not as easy as you'd think. And there you go, that's the final look. It still looks awkward. So let's move on to the next one. We're going to do some stars. Little throwback to those Pony Club days. And again, I'm just prepping the coat, giving it a spray with some hairspray, brushing the coat in the right direction, and then I just lay the stencil on and start brushing the coat in the wrong direction. And again, it's fiddly, the stencil kind of wants to move around, so I'm just going for it and hoping for the best. And there we go. So really simple, really easy, but kind of a bit basic. Right then guys, this is the main event. I'm going to treat you all to my poor attempt at doing freehand quarter marks. Now, this is my first ever attempt. I've just watched a few videos online and <laughs> I am winging it. So, prepping the coat again with my little hairspray. I'm gonna brush the coat in the right direction. 
and basically I just start drawing lines willy-nilly like the lines I've seen on YouTube I feel like I'm gonna watch this back one day and cringe there we go so three lines and then I finish off both edges by drawing lines in the right direction and now I'm going to add a bit more hairspray because I've decided that isn't enough and I'm going to now start having a go at what I think is called shark teeth which basically you just draw diagonal lines so I'm drawing diagonal lines down now fairly badly and then in the opposite direction you draw a line back towards the bum and it kind of makes a triangle shape a rather wonky triangle shape but a triangle shape nevertheless a bit more hairspray and then we just repeat the same process so diagonal lines in one direction and then diagonal lines in the other direction and essentially I do three of these shark's teeth I have no idea why we do them I've seen other people do them and I'm just having a go but essentially I think it's supposed to highlight the better areas of your horse which for me is his entire butt so he has patterns all over his butt and there we go I finished them off and they're there they exist and I'm pretty pleased with it to be fair I'm in luck I didn't do as bad as I was expecting I feel like it's starting to come together you know my tack is nearly clean I have plaits and a tail plait Harry's tied up and we even have some quad marks so, what are we missing? I'm gonna do one more thing. I mean, some people go as far as like doing the whole horse makeup thing. I'm not quite there. Um, I feel like I'm really pushing the boat out by just doing these few steps. And I'm sure there's a lot of people watching this who are just like, this is just part of like normal turnout for a show. Me, it's all a bit new and I am yeah, I'm pushing myself. So, I'm going to finish off with who's. Um, this is something that I'm capable of doing. Um, apart from getting myself dressed and making myself look presentable, um, yeah, it's just Harry. So we're going to finish off by doing hooves. And again, I just want to make sure they're clean, presentable, and looking as smart as possible. So if you know anything about Harry and you follow them on Instagram, you will know that Harry is barefoot. Um, so yeah, I want his little twinkly toes to twinkle as much as possible. Um, when he's flicking his little feet as he goes across that diagonal, I want them to stand out. So yeah, we're gonna put a bit of bit of time into them, try and draw a bit of attention to them, and here we go. Let's get back to the yard. So my hoof routine is really simple. I just like to give them a really good scrub and a clean and prep them for oil. There is nothing worse than oiling poo on a hoof. So the hoof oil that I like to use is Ethel, and it's just a clear hoof oil, but obviously there's lots of others to choose from. And once the hoof is clean, I just add it liberally to the hoof with a hoof brush, and I just move from one foot to another. And as you can see, Harry's feet are bare, so I do think this makes his hoof stand out, but obviously it's also just a nice treatment for the feet and keeps them looking healthy. So there are other products that you can use. Some people use the hoof stains and dye the horse's hooves black. But I think a natural hoof looks nice and just glossy. And so there we go, two matching shiny feet. There we go. So we've made it through all of the steps. We have plaits in both the mane and the tail. We have quarter marks, slightly dodgy ones, which I'm gonna go for the freestyle ones. I'm going to continue to work on it. I've got a few days coming up and I'm going to do them every single day and I'm going to get better at them. I'm not going to use a stencil just because it is a little bit pony club and I can be better than that. So yes, we've got the quarter marks, shiny shoes, clean tack, and then there's just me to get ready. But kind of know what I'm doing there. It's just essentially me wearing the same outfit I wear every single time. It's only Harry who has all the different outfit changes. I have the same jacket, shirt, slightly stained white jods, and some boots that I will try and oil as I go into the ring. So yeah. I feel like we're a 
one step closer to this dressage look. Like, we could look like dressage divas. As I said in the beginning, this isn't about me telling you how to become a dressage diva like me. This is me telling you how I'm going to try and navigate the world of dressage and start to look like one of those proper serious dressage bobs. So hopefully when I get to the nationals, I fit in or at least look the part. And I don't feel quite as intimidated by all the other fancy horses and riders that are there on the day. So I actually feel like I've learned quite a lot by doing this. Um, I feel like my platin game has improved. Harry's mane and tail just look better because I've had to sort them out. Now I've done my first little quarter marks. Bingo, tax cleaned and we know what we're doing with the feet. So hopefully you've learned something along the way. And absolutely, if you've watched this and been cringing like crazy at any point during this and you have some advice for me, give me it. I won't be offended. I need all the help I can get. I mean, all I can hear is like quarter marks, like screaming in my ear. I know I'm gonna get grief for that, but I don't care, like I've had a go. So <laughs> maybe you've never done it. Maybe you should do, maybe there's a push to go and have a go at it. I don't know, but yeah, I do feel more prepared got a few new skills in Plabel and I'm going out this weekend to go do some more dressage so I will definitely be plaiting up, doing my quarter marks, shining them shoes, probably making my tack dirty again and I'll have to clean it again but that's just all part of the game isn't it so I hope you've enjoyed watching this. I hope I don't cringe too much when I watch this back one day and yeah let me know what you thought please like, comment and subscribe and we will see you next time.